Throughout the reign of King Henry VIII, the infamous Tudor monarch executed up to 70,000 people inside of his own kingdom, and this included two of his own wives, but those who were of the very noble status and birth were allowed what was regarded as a private execution away from the eyes of the general public inside the Tower of London. Truth be told, when these executions were carried out inside of the Tower, there would actually be hundreds of witnesses, some of whom even snuck into the fortress as the gates were regularly accidentally left open. But one woman, who is often forgotten about when compared with the two wives of the king who were condemned inside of the Tower, was a woman who had royal blood and who many regarded to have a legitimate claim to the English throne. Some classed Margaret Pole, the Countess of Salisbury, as someone who had a better claim to the throne than the King, Henry VIII. But Henry would dispatch her at the hands of a brutal executioner, who made a terrible job of the execution. But centuries later, the body of Margaret Pole was dug up and exhumed inside the Tower of London's chapel. What's the story of this? Margaret Pole was the daughter of George Plantagenet, the Duke of Clarence, who is considered one of the medieval period's biggest traitors. He stabbed his brother, Edward IV, in the back a number of times during the Wars of the Roses, and as George Plantagenet was the brother of the king, this then meant that Margaret possessed royal blood and equally a later claim to the English throne. She was one of only two women who during the Tudor period became a peeress in her own right without having a husband who claimed a title and she was considered the last remaining member of the Plantagenet dynasty in the House of York, the sworn enemies of the Tudors. But following the Battle of Bosworth Field, the Tudors of course took the throne as Henry VII defeated Richard III, the uncle of Margaret. Margaret Pole was the cousin of the new Queen Elizabeth of York and Margaret was cared for by the new king and queen. She was then married off to Sir Richard Pole, Henry VII's cousin, and he was a key player in the king's government. But she then also became close with Catherine of Aragon, who was married to the heir, at the time, Arthur Tudor. But Richard Pole died in 1505, leaving Margaret a widow with five children, and she did not know where to turn, and she was forced to live inside of Sion Abbey with the nuns. But she came to prominence during the reign of Henry VIII. When Henry VIII married Catherine of Aragon, Margaret became one of the Queen's ladies-in-waiting, and she was restored to some of her brother's lands, and she was known as the Countess of Salisbury. As a landowner, Margaret was rather skilled and she was very well thought of. She promoted learning and her sons also did well. But Margaret even had land disputes with Henry VIII and came off rather well from them. She was the governess of the king's eldest daughter Mary, the future Mary I, and she was close with her. However, one of the biggest issues for Margaret Pole was that her son dissented against the king, Reginald Pole was later accepted as a cardinal for Rome, and he was a massive enemy of Henry VIII. He began to plot to provoke an invasion of England following Henry's changes to the church in England, and the king learned of this, and he was furious. Margaret also angered the king as she refused to hand Mary I jewels back, and the king said that she was a fool, and then as Reginald Pole continued to rise through the Catholic Church's ranks, He then continued to speak out against Henry and Anne Boleyn, his second wife. But the king, Henry VIII, threatened Pole and said that if a cardinal's hat ever arrived on English soil for them, he would not have a head to wear it on. But Reginald Pole was made a cardinal in 1537 and the Pope then put him in charge of organising resistance and then colluding with the Pilgrimage of Grace the uprising that took place in the north of England. This rebellion was the most serious during Henry VIII's reign and it focused on the dissolution of the monasteries and Cromwell and the king's changes to the church that brought misery to many and made many monks and religious people homeless. But following this, there was a huge amount of bloodshed as the king executed many and Geoffrey Pole, Margaret's son, was arrested in 1538 and then Margaret Pole was arrested at the age of 65 and was then accused of treason and was sent to the Tower of London. 
she lost all of her lands and her titles, and it was claimed that during interrogation that Cromwell had located in her home a tunic which carried the five wounds of Christ, and Margaret was then accused of underground illegal Catholic worship. But this was apparently found six months after her arrest, meaning it was therefore planted as false evidence, and Cromwell had produced this himself, but it was used as a way to sentence Margaret Pole, the elderly countess, to death. She was not given an execution date, and she was to be executed whenever Henry VIII wished, and this meant that every day she awoke inside of the tower, not knowing if it would be her last. She was kept under lock and key for two and a half years inside of the tower. She was given some servants and some clothing inside of the tower, and she carved inside the wall of her cell that, For traitors on the block shall die, I am no traitor, no, not I. My faithfulness stands fast and so, towards the block I shall not go, nor make one step as you shall see, Christ in thy mercy save thou me. Then on the morning of the 27th of May 1541, Margaret Pole was told she was going to be executed within the next hour, and she said she had not committed any crimes, but the king had ordered her execution. It was quickly planned and no scaffold was available for her execution. She was dragged from her prison cell to where a wooden block had been placed on the ground and she was then approached by an axeman, but not the normal executioner who performed executions inside the tower or on Tower Hill. He was armed with his weapon and there are differing accounts of her execution. The main executioner had been sent north to deal with the executions following the Pilgrimage of Grace but the man who executed Margaret, it was said to have been a wretched and blundering youth who literally hacked her head and shoulders to pieces in the most pitiful manner. The account stated that it took roughly ten swings of the axe to perform her execution and to take Margaret Pole's head from her shoulders. Another claimed that after the first blow from the axe that Margaret left up from the block and tried to run around the courtyard, and then eleven swings of the axe were needed to behead her. But following her execution, the remains of the elderly Margaret Pole were collected and they were then taken to the nearby chapel of St Peter Advincula, within the tower's walls. But during the reign of Queen Victoria, the monarch visited the chapel and said that the repair work was needed, as it was not fit enough of a place to house the remains of queens. The floor in particular was a mess and it needed lifting. Specialists and archaeologists were brought in and inside of the chapel. The remains of many of those people who lost their lives inside the Tower of London during the Tudor period and later, and also those who were executed on Tower Hill, were discovered. Queen Anne Boleyn's body was located and identified by the royal physician and doctor, and a committee was gathered to analyse the remains of those who were discovered to try and identify them. With Margaret Pole, the committee were looking for something quite particular, an elderly woman of the 16th century who had lost her head through execution by a sharp instrument such as an axe. The first woman's bones that were found under the floor were of a woman of 40 years old, and the committee settled that these belonged to Jane Boleyn, or Lady Rochford, the sister-in-law of Anne Boleyn and the wife of George Boleyn, but she had been executed inside the Tower of London by axe. Close by to the remains of Lady Rochford were found the full skeletal remains of a woman who was described of considerably advanced years, who had been tall and certainly of above average height. The committee analysed these remains and this elderly woman had clearly been executed by decapitation using a sharp instrument. And there was only one woman who fitted the bill for this and that was Margaret Pole, the Countess of Salisbury. She was 67 when she was executed and during the Tudor period was said to have been very old by the standards of the day and it was also known that she was a rather tall lady. Her remains were then gathered and were then placed inside of an individual leaden box or a small coffin. On top of this, a small engraving outlined whose remains were inside, and this coffin were then moved to a number of months to the Queen's house opposite the chapel. After the work had been completed, the remains of Margaret Pole were then reburied back inside the chapel close to the high altar, 
she was interred in front of the altar, on the plot closest to the wall next to Jane Boleyn. But let's remember she was a woman who lost her head in one of the most brutal and barbaric ways possible, and she was a victim of the most notorious king that England had ever seen. She was a woman who had royal blood, being the daughter of the brother of Edward the Fourth, and she had, in the eyes of some, a better claim to the English crown than the man who condemned her. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.